Hello, I'm Johannes Flodaus. I've been a professional art instructor for 25 years and have taught thousands of students online. And I get lots of emails and they ask me, what is my preferred medium? And there are four basic mediums that most people use, which is acrylics, oils, pastel, and watercolor. And I like to contrast when I give the answer, basically what the differences are between acrylics and oils because they're quite similar and pastels and watercolor tend to be in a separate category altogether. Some of the advantages of acrylics over oils so that you can make a decision what you want to paint is that acrylics, just like with oils, you can have very large format gallery paintings, things that will take up about the size of a living room wall. I've seen, I visited galleries all over the United States and uh, analyzed paintings and I've seen that uh, large paintings with cowboys and Indians, which have a lot of detail. Uh, they're painted with acrylics because the artist can get tight and start to paint strands of grass and twigs on the ground and uh, smoke coming out of the pipes of the Indians and so on and so forth. Whereas oils tends to be a more impressionist, fast application, blurred edges, uh, I, which is representational landscape painting to give an idea rather than a photographic image. Okay, using my wheel system, my, my color wheel system where you visualize it as a clock instead of a color wheel, which is more difficult to remember, you can easily locate that, let's say red orange, which is nine o'clock. All you need is the complement color. That's a, a new term that I'm introducing, which means you just draw the opposite line across the clock. The opposite of nine o'clock is three o'clock. You take that color, you take that color, you mix them together, and that's how you quiet down the red orange. Because if you make this comparison, we bring this over here. The chroma that like I mentioned earlier, or the color saturation is much stronger. So we have to quiet that down. So step number one is we locate the hue. Step number two, we have to put it in the right value. So right, right now that is about the right value if I squint my eyes, but we have to quiet down the color. So all I have to do now is take the opposite from the color wheel and add that to this. Now we have found the correct hue, which is a red orange. We have graded down with its complement. All we have to do is correct the value. As you can see, this is a little bit darker. Take into account that a paintbrush has five different faces to it. We always think of a brush as either painting on an edge, such as with a pen. A lot of people tend to grab their brush like that, like a pen. But you want to take advantage of the five faces. So I have a large brush, if you consider that size, but if I turn it, I have a thin brush. So I got two brushes in one. And then I have the edge and I have the tip. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and if I consider the tip, six sides to a brush. And all those should be used simultaneously. Let's say, for example, if I want to paint the contour of a seascape, I can start like this. Now watch me turn that brush. Look how I have an irregular pattern. Just imagine how you can apply that in so many different items. If I push up a little bit more, I can combine that and also create bushes at the same time. Okay, so I'm taking titanium white, cobalt blue, and I never paint a blue sky. Believe it or not, on a hue-wise point of view, never a blue sky. I paint either a blue-green sky or a violet sky, but not a blue sky, because I would have no way to harmonize that with the rest of the painting. So in this case, I'm going to go into the blue-green hue. 
start from the top. Take into account it's going to dry a little bit darker. And we're going to use a dry brush technique once again. That's one of the most common brush strokes that ever exist because you end up with very sporadic, spontaneous strokes. And I can do dry brushing and tapping. And automatically, thinking a negative space, I'm already forming the clouds. What you don't want to have is a major cloud and nothing following up. I never have blue sky and then a solid blue sky and then a rain cloud. I always leave little specks of clouds coming off the, the mother cloud. They float away. Twisting and turning. Now, skies are a little bit darker on the top. They get a little bit lighter at the bottom and warmer. So I'm just going to go more into my green for that. Oh, that's a nice green.